The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light, sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Doctor Al Aziz, my dear doctor, so um, we've um, discussed uh, previously about uh, Masjid Al Quba, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa uh, waiting for Amir Al Mu'mineen Alayhi Salam and the importance of him being there and why waiting for him to enter the, the city. Uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam left Mecca, Quraysh uh, sent troops. So there were seven according to uh, the narrations. Mm -hmm. There were seven and the eighth being the servant. Now Amir al-Mu'mineen fought them off uh, and continued to Medina. In the, in the period between Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam going to Medina, the Holy Prophet waited there and I wanted to discuss one of the great companions of the Holy Prophet, Salman al-Farsi. So he, he was introduced, that's why he met the Holy Prophet at the Masjid al-Quba. If we can talk about a bit to get, acquire some information about Salman. Who is Salman al-Farsi? What's his story? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين والله 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 uh, made it known that he's living with the um, Fawatim, if you like, uh, uh, Fatima bint Asad, his mother, Fatima bint Rasulullah, uh, the daughter of the Prophet وآله, and Fatima bint Zubair ibn Ab uh, Abdul Muttalib, uh, that is the cousin of the Prophet or his cousin. Um, <coughs> and um, there was um, um, Abu Waqid, who is the who was the servant uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa um, and Ayman, the son of Um Ayman, um, they were with him. And uh, Quraysh um, didn't want to be seen standing idly and doing nothing, and they decided to confront Imam Ali alayhi salam as he was leaving. And uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam, uh, uh, they sent um, eight of their warriors or rather seven seven of the warriors along <coughs> with uh, the servant of Abu Sufyan so that makes them eight <coughs> and there was some fighting between Imam Ali he, Imam Ali alayhi salam said to Abu Waqid and Ayman the son of Umm Ayman um, you take care of the uh, women and I'll take care of these guys <coughs> so there was um, uh, <coughs> um, fighting between the two sides, Imam Ali on one side and those eight on the other. <coughs> and uh, Imam Ali uh, obviously uh, uh, defeated them and um, uh, they, were, they were severely injured um, and probably one of them was killed. Um, um, uh, I say probably because he was 
one of them had his, if you like, shoulder hacked off. Uh, whether he died of that injury or not doesn't say. Um, and oh. uh, by a single so by the single uh, blow, blow from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imagine, imagine the power of Imam uh, yeah, <laughs> Ali. Alayhi. And um, and when um, they were repelled, uh, they continued with the journey um, to, um, uh, to towards Medina. Mm. And um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the Prophet sallallahu was waiting in in the village of Quba, which is at the outskirts of Medina at that time. And there he founded the Masjid al Quba. So he built, if you like, or arranged for it to be built and founded the Masjid al Quba. Uh, the foundation of the, we have Masjid al Quba now, which is obviously very big compared to what it used to be, but at least it was in that location that the Prophet <coughs> founded uh, Masjid al Quba. He was waiting for uh, <coughs> Imam Ali to arrive. Of course, people, the loyal. Muslims from uh, Al Ansar, uh, from Medina, they used to come and see the Prophet so, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so that he wouldn't be, if you like, alone. Given the fact that Abu Bakr has left, uh, uh, they saw that he had left it and he arrived in Medina alone. <coughs> so um, one of them who used to uh, frequently come and see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was Saad ibn Maaz. And if you remember in previ previous episodes, Saad ibn Maaz. Uh, was one of the two people of uh, Khazraj who came uh, uh, to see the Prophet and they spoke to the Prophet and became Muslim. Sa'ad became Muslim first um, and then uh, the Quran, Ibn Zurara, um, they were the two. So Sa'ad ibn Ma'ad was very loyal to the Prophet and he kept coming to see the Prophet at uh, Quba. Um, and it is said that it was uh, in Quba that uh, the renowned and devout um, companion, would-be companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Salman al-Farsi, um, he came to see the Prophet there. Salman al-Farsi, Radwanullah Ta'ala Alayhi, which uh, as you know, he was very devout uh, and very loyal to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was uh, one of the few who remained um, loyal uh, to the promise that they had given to the Prophet and to Imam Ali alayhi salam after the de death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Um, Salman uh, was a, used to be a Zorosian but he converted to Christianity. He was looking for, even apparently in their books, um, there was uh, talk about in their, um, amongst their scholars, the Zorosian scholars, um, they were talk about the um, uh, the prophet of the end of time um, or the final prophet if you like uh, so he was looking for the final prophet he went to Sham, Syria or Egypt, North Africa and uh, today's Turkey, the Byzantine, looking for uh, the prophet and he spent many years, he, he converted to Christianity it is said and um, he had um, he spent long t years um, with one particular scholar and another, whether while he was in, in Turkey or in other locations, whether it's uh, Syria or Egypt. It is said that he spent uh, uh, time with them and um, learning from them. And it is said that um, his last mentor, when he was about to die or near uh, the end of his life, he said that it is time for the, he was Christian scholar, and he said that it is time for the final pro uh, prophet to appear. And later on he did say to Salman that you should find the one you were looking for in Medina. <clears throat> so when his mentor died, he headed for Medina. And it is said that um, uh, while he was uh, <coughs> while he was uh, traveling, arriving in um, near, um, if you like, the Arabia, he was taken um, by bandits or whatever as a slave, and he was sold as a slave to. Uh, 
uh, a Jewish family who resided in Medina. And it is said that on one occasion, while he was working with, you know, as a slave for the, for the Jewish family, um, they had visitors and they were talking, if you like, um, uh, the visitor was talking to the, to his, to the master, to his master, uh, Salman's master. Um, and uh, they were saying that uh, they have a prophet who has, uh, who has come from Mecca uh, to Medina and, and, and uh, uh, people are very happy and so on. And uh, he asked um, where exactly in Medina? Um, and his master said, it's none of your business. You do your job. You have nothing to do with this matter. So he kept quiet. And it says that he left um, whenever he had the opportunity to go and see and ask. Of course, he couldn't speak Arabic. He came across a woman. It is said that she was an Isbahani or Isfahani, uh, Iranian woman who could speak Farsi. And he asked her about this new prophet. Um, and she said to him, apparently she had become Muslim already, that uh, woman, that Iranian woman, Isfahani woman. And she said to him that you can find him in, in Quba. And um, he went to Quba and of course he saw the Prophet and he saw the signs. Um, and he asked, uh, he, he, he'd learned from his scholars that he wouldn't take Sadaqah because Sadaqah is haram for him. And, um, but he would take a gift. If you give him a gift, he would. He, um, so he gave him a plate of dates and he said, this is Sadaqah. And the Prophet took it from him and he gave it to the companions and said, who, those who were around him said, eat. And he didn't eat any of that. And Salman said, oh, this is the first sign. And the second sign, sort of, he came back later and he said, this is, uh, a, again, a, a, a plate full of date. And he said, this is uh, a gift for you. And he thanked him. He took one. And of course, he gave the rest. He said, oh, this is the second sign. And of course, the second sign was the sign at the back of his, uh, at, at his back, the, the birthmark, birth uh, birth at the back of his shoulder. And was it any specific, do we know? Was it something written or was it just a, what kind of a uh, birthmark? Is that what it, it doesn't is? say. Is it like, like, like a mole? It's probably what was a mole, but sort of, uh, how could they identify this mole from a different one? Exactly. Uh, I haven't come across anything which to say mm -hmm. uh, exactly what it was. Uh, so he identified that as well. And of course, he started talking to the Prophet, telling him who he was. And, and his journey. His journey and so on. And he went Subhanallah. And Imagine of course, how he beautiful all those he years praised. of waiting and finally meeting. Yeah. That, you know, when I hear of these... Um, the stories of the companions. I think of us in uh, in our time, in time of Ghayba of Imam al Hajj Allah Ta'ala Faraj al Sharif, how we ourselves as well pray and wish we could see him with our own very eyes, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. be part of, you know, be part of his life and him of, of ours. And uh, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless us to, to Inshallah, see him. but those who were loyal companions to the Prophet, mm -hmm. I mean, there were a lot of so called companions. True. Anyone who sort of saw the Prophet is better as companions. But there were those who were loyal to the Prophet, devout, uh, sincere and honest about their loyalty. And um, they um, followed the teachings of, of the Prophet exactly. Nothing more, nothing less. Contrary to the behavior and conduct of many other so-called companions, if you like. Uh, the majority of the companions of the Prophet uh, uh, were not anywhere near uh, as loyal as what is ex expected of them to be, or at least adhering to the teachings uh, uh, of, of, of the Prophet mm -hmm. But there were people like uh, Salman, Salman is, he used to be referred to as Salman al-Farsi, Salman the Persian, uh, but the Prophet said, referred to him as Salman al-Muhammadi, uh, there was Salman al Muhammadi, there was Abu Dhar, um, uh, there was uh, Al Muqdad al Kindi, there was uh, Ammar bin Yasir. Um, so they were really making sure that they follow the teachings of the Prophet and they, they are in harmony with the teachings of the Prophet. Uh, and of course, that uh, meant. Uh, 
um, they are not uh, corrupted in any way and that meant that they had to stand up to corruption and any straying from the teachings of, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and of course uh, they had a, a, a um, very firm stance uh, against the rulers who came to rule uh, the Muslim nation contrary to the teachings of, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the Prophet because they usurped the Khilafah from Amir al-Mu'mineen from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Um, so yes, it, it was a it was a they had a, a heavy duty, they have a, a heavy duty on their hand, on their shoulders in the sense that they had to uh, make sure they stand fast uh, by the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and uh, by doing so that meant they had to go against uh, the corrupt rulers um, who ruled and um, people like Abu Dhar for example he wouldn't um, uh, stay quiet he would protest against uh, corruption especially uh, against Uthman and to the extent that he was uh, tortured and he was sent into exile uh, to a number of places he was sent to Syria to into exile he was sent to Lebanon Jabal Amil uh, into exile and he faced a lot of hardship uh, as well as all other these companions that I mentioned Salman Abu Dhar Maqdad uh, Amar bin Yasir um, and people like them uh, and finally he was sent to uh, uh, area of Rabada uh, where he died of hunger and thirst so being a, a devout companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi is uh, is a huge responsibility. Well, most definitely, most definitely. Um, so S Salman, uh, as you mentioned, would come and go. So he 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 planned to stay in Medina and waited for the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, and he'd come and go. Um, do we know? How long approximately the Holy Prophet waited for Amir al-Mu'mineen? It is said the least figure is um, 12 days and some, some put it more. He waited... So between uh, two weeks to a month? Two weeks to a month, if you know. Yeah. Um, um, <clears throat> two to three weeks, let's say. Uh, he waited for Amir al-Mu'mineen <coughs> to arrive. And as um, you mentioned earlier, the other thing which uh, the Prophet um, is, is, if you like, unsaid, unspoken, the Prophet wanted to make sure that he arrives uh, uh, the city of Medina along with Imam Ali alayhi salam. So Amir al-Mu'mineen at some point reaches uh, Masjid al-Quba. The Holy Prophet sallallahu reunites with Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. If you can uh, tell us, uh, tell me a bit about that event, anything we can, anything we may know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the important thing, yes, obviously, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was uh, concerned that they arrive uh, safely, which, of course, uh, they do. He was very happy. But uh, about this, um, uh, his daughter Fatima Zara has arrived. Um, Fatima bint Asad, the mother of Imam Ali, has arrived. Fatima bint Asad was... Uh, the one who brought up the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa she took uh, particular care about the Prophet ever since he was uh, very young, uh, because she was involved with the uh, Imam Ali, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa from the moment he was born, and uh, she was the one who gave the good news of the birth of the Prophet to her husband Abu Talib alayhi salam, and it was at that time when he said, "Don't be surprised that you will give birth to his successor." And we all know okay, what we, happened with the Taaba. Al but I want to say that uh, Fatima bint Asad, they, uh, uh, the mother of Muhammad Ali, had um, uh, uh, showed a lot of care for the pro for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the extent that he used to call her mum, ummi, kana to ummi. She was uh, as if she was uh, my mum because uh, we, she took a lot of care. Uh, uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What about after the passing away of Khadija alayhi salam? Would she be a mother figure for Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam as well? Exactly. Yeah. You know, she. Um, she didn't so have they were any all, all yeah. pretty much yeah. the family. But they had, despite all that, they had, um, 
you know, their business, the mission. The, the Prophet ﷺ wanted to go quickly to Medina to establish, if you like, uh, that city as his uh, place as his uh, seat, if you like, of authority, mm. uh, because they had given him a promise that they would uh, support him, and he had all his mission ahead of him, uh, or at least the remainder of it, which is another 10 years, and he wanted to establish, if you like, the Islamic government, the government which he ruled, and show the teaching of Islam to the people. Uh, so he had a lot of things to do. Uh, they probably waited for... Uh, whatever, whether it was hours, mm. they, or doesn't say whether they traveled on the same day, started heading for Medina or it was the next day, but obviously they went to Medina. How far away is uh, Masjid al-Qubba from Medina? You, you, probably on foot, you're talking about a few hours. A few hours, uh, few on, hours foot, yeah. Yeah, on foot, yeah, it's not, okay. it's not that, that far. Um, and um, so they, oh, I'm sure they were, he was pleased to see people like his daughter Fatima al-Zahra and people like his, uh, if you like, mom, uh, as he used to call her, Fatima bint Asad. And of course, he was very pleased to see Imam Ali salam safely uh, arriving. Um, he was very pleased about that and to say that. And, but the important thing, he wanted to be seen that he arrives in Medina with, along with Imam Ali salam. Basically, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, throughout, from the moment that he the first revelation took place, he used every opportunity to show that Imam Ali is along with me, he is supporting me, and he is the one who is going to lead the Ummah as my successor. He is going to lead the Ummah after me. So the Prophet ﷺ, he used every opportunity to show, to, pass, to um, express this, uh, and uh, uh, show that message to the people. Even by even by just arriving at the city of Medina along with Imam Ali and rather than anyone else. Um, and of course, um, uh, that, Alhamdulillah, this is what happened. Um, and if you like, the, the next episode starts there. Yeah, inshallah, we'll discuss uh, Medina uh, and um, what, what uh, happened from there on. Inshallah. Uh, inshallah, well, Throughout the stay of the Prophet ﷺ, there were many debates and discussions and dialogue between uh, Jewish individuals, Jewish scholars, and the Prophet ﷺ, and many embraced Islam. Um, during uh, the uh, stay of the Prophet ﷺ in Medina during the 10 years, and of course that continued. There were Jewish scholars used to come from far afield, and uh, uh, they say, we want to speak to the Khalifa of uh, uh, your Prophet. And they used to say, here it is, Khalifa of the Prophet, Abu Bakr. And they used to ask questions, and he couldn't answer. And, uh, you know, uh, they used to say, obviously, there's something wrong, because we expected that the Khalifa of, the, of Muhammad would be able to answer our questions, or should be knowledgeable, and so on. And people said to them, look, you need probably try someone else and they send them to, to Imam Ali alayhi salam.